Let's talk about a little bit of complete dentures and the relationship between dentate patients, edentulous patients, and the articulator patient. The dentate patient, if you, is, as, as you see it here, we've got the patient occluding on a regular occlusion. Patients still have teeth. As patients start losing the teeth, we're gonna start seeing different patterns of reabsorption. On the lower, we will find these vertical reabsorptions of the, of the mandible. And on the maxillary, we'll find it more towards the center. Of and if you compare the loss of that vertical dimension we talk, how do I know this patient has lost the vertical dimension? Well, first of all, patient has lost the teeth, right? So that brings it down. That brings this mandible up even farther, right? Then if you see these points here, for example, and you draw a line or you measure from this to the very base of the mandible, which has, these two points have not been reabsorbed or moved, right? They start getting closer and closer to each other. Now, listen, see, see on this one, these two same structures, they're so much close together. Now, if you see this one on the occlusal part, you see how the, premax the maxillary starts getting way smaller, right? The mandible starts reabsorbing vertically, and you see how it becomes wider? Well, it's not that it's wider. I mean, it's the same width of this mandible. The problem is that the big maxillary has shrunk towards the center, giving that illusion of a class three patient, okay? now. How, did, how can I relate this to the semi-adjustable articulator? Specifically talking, or specifically um, in, in, in the complete denture course. Remember how we have two parts of the articulator, right? One of them has got the condyles, right? The other one's got what we say it's the glenoid fossas, right? Now, if you see this, you can pretty much almost articulate this maxillary onto the glenoid fossas. And this is what, what we can pretty much picture how this mandible will move in that glenoid fossa. Now we have here in the upper part of the articulator, we've got what they will mimic the, article, the, the glenoid fossas right there. Now, the glenoid fossas, remember, have, let's see if I can see it here, but it's got an angle where the condyle will travel, remember? So this angle is fixed, or it can be altered here. If you take the knob off, you can alter that angulation here. For complete dentures, and most of the time, I want you guys to have it in a range of 30 degrees, okay? So we're gonna lock them in 30. Picture now the articulator, right? Here, remember, we got the centric lock. That centric lock will prevent from this coming apart, right? Then you got these locks over here as well. I want you guys to put it in place, right? So now we have a hinge that opens and closes. If you see this universal mounting table, it will have pretty much that same inclination that we find here. Yeah, basically 10 degrees, yeah. How am I going to rest start restoring Mr. Adventurous uh, Senior? Well, the first thing we did was what? We took alginate impressions, right? Then we fabricate our custom impression trays, right? Then with that, we'll fabricate a wax rim. This wax and this base plate will rest on the dentulous area of the patient, right? And will <clears throat> restore the 
vertical dimension that has been loose, lo has been lost because of the maxillary reabsorption. We've tried these um, wax rims on our patient and we like it and you know it gives you the good lip support, it gives you the good vertical and everything so I transfer these now to the universal mounting table and the wax rims here will make up for the amount of bone reabsorption, the amount of bone reabsorption and the teeth right there. For the cores, for our cores, what I want to get is, a, because this is going to be a clinical, when, it, when you're in the clinic, you will start adjusting these wax rims to the point where you find that lost vertical dimension. Here I will give you from the base of Mr. Edentulo Rodriguez to the top part of the base of this, of the upper of Mr. Edentulo's in occlusion, you've got to have a magic number of 64. Remember, it's very important we index the models. Okay, we do these V shapes on the on that. What is that V? What what why do we index the models, Wally? All right. So <clears throat> if if you take it off, you can accurately put it back onto your mounting stone. And there, when you send it to the lab, you want to knock it off. Sometimes it's good to be able to remount the case later. Right. So then now we have set it to where it fits the dinar now. Be careful with these two little notches right here. We got two little notches that may come out easily. You see, they may come out easily. If you lose them, you have to order these parts and pieces and they're not cheap. So make sure you keep them nice and neat in that box of yours. We also, you also have to have it in 10 degrees of inclination, right? And you gotta have it in the second line where it says denar, denar 10, okay? So that's where you keep it, that's where you put it, that's how you close it. Once you, when we get to this point where we have take master final impressions on Mr. Edentulo Rodriguez, right here, right here, we obtain master casts, right here, right? Then on these master casts, we fabricate a well-fitted base plates and wax rims, right? Now it's time for these base plates and wax rims that should have the correct focal inclination in the anterior section, right? Mm -hmm. You see it well? I'm going to turn it like this. And then as you go to the posterior, it's got a buccal posterior inclination towards the center. This one there, it comes out buccally, it comes out. And this one comes in lingually. Can you see it there, Wally? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, also, the posterior end of the wax rims and mark the cast outside to where the tuberosities end. This is my mark. Now, when I put this base plate, I, can, I know where the end of the tuberosities are or, where, or the beginning of it, if you're looking at it from the anterior, and that's where I will end in a 45 degree angle, not a 45, mm -hmm. pretty much, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a 45 degree angle, I will end that wax rim. Well, I cannot go about, about where a second molar would be. Exactly, yeah. and I don't want to go any farther than that because it, then it will prevent from the lower to bite correctly or close correctly. So summarize, we got buccal inclination, about 20 Facial. degrees. Facial inclination, labial inclination, yeah. Anterior buccal inclination, mm -hmm. you know, labial. Then we got posterior inclination right here towards the lingual, towards the buccal, towards the lingual, okay? If you see it from the occlusal, can you see it from the occlusal right there? Mm -hmm. It Focus better. goes in to the lingual. 
it goes in to the lingual on the posterior and it goes out for that. Why am I doing that? Because remember, if you see our patients, if you see the patient like that, like that, you will find that this anterior section is always flaring out a little bit. Okay? And we are at the end, this what what this base plate and wax room is gonna do is going to put it, we're gonna put it on a patient's mouth, right? Along with the with the lower right there. And we're going to try to recover what it has been lost. We're gonna try to recover that vertical dimension that the dentate patient had before. And now it's been lost due, or let's do it here, look, let's do it here. It's been lost due to the lack or the amount of reabsorption. Lack of teeth and the amount of reabsorption, okay?